Hello, every morning. Good morning to everyone. Happy Monday. Hello, let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me this morning? Or can I not hear you, maybe? Yes, you... Okay, so I can't hear you, I assume. So... Let me check my settings. All right, I'm going to sign out, come back in, see if that helps. All right, guys, so let's try it again. I can, I guess you can hear me. You can activate your microphone. But I still can't hear you. Well... This weekend's been the twilight zone here. A lot of weird stuff going on. Let me check. Uh, let me check my settings here. Hmm. All right. I'm going to quickly reboot. Hang tight, guys. I'll be right back. Actually, I just realized I wasn't recording. So I am recording now. Uh, let me start with Donna. I uh, left a few comments, and then I'll go with uh, Fatima. I'm uh, recording, and I'm also activating my microphone just in case you're in the class right now. If you're not in the class, don't worry. I'm trying to record these so that you can go back and uh, view the recording and, v and view the feedback. Let me go back with uh, Donna because I just finished giving feedback but just realized I wasn't recording. So I am recording now. Let me go back. So Donna, the main thing I want to suggest to you, you've got a really good start. I like the overall template that you chose for your ePortfolio. And I like how that you have your name, of course. You have a, a title, the ePortfolio. And uh, I think that's that's good. My main suggestion would be, number one, to try to remove any extraneous information from your ePortfolio. What I mean by that is, when you're creating a template for the first time, a lot of times uh, it will include some content and images that maybe you don't want to end up using for your own ePortfolio. So you want to make sure that you end up removing any pages, any content that doesn't directly relate to your own space. So if Acrylic Afternoons is not the name of your page, then try to find a way to remove that. Uh, if you have a book, a class, if this doesn't relate, or a gallery, right, that doesn't relate to your ePortfolio, you want to end up removing that. So I understand that all of you are just uh, beginning with your ePortfolio, so maybe you don't have a lot of content at the beginning, but that's fine. I would rather you have that than have extraneous information or information that doesn't really relate to you as a professional. So in this case, you might just want to remove these pages or you might want to replace these pages with something else. So you might want to change the navigational bar up here to change these menus to represent maybe the different strands that are part of the BA that you're going to be a part of next year. So maybe you have one menu up here for, let's say, English development, which pertains to uh, the artifacts that I'm asking you to include this semester. You might also include another sub page or another option or link up here for, let's say, applied linguistics. You might have a third title or heading that is that has something to do with teaching methodology. And you might have a fourth title or heading that is that relates to the practicum courses. Okay. So again, even though you're not 
really, uh, you're probably not going to have artifacts in those categories. You might have those headings already in place with the idea that later you can add to those. All right, so for now, for this semester, we certainly want a heading probably called English Development or English Skill Development, something along those lines to represent the prope classes that you're currently taking. So that would be my main um, that would be my main feedback. That would be my main uh, comment about what you have here. Uh, don't forget to include your video, your introduction video that introduces yourself and also introduces your space, your ePortfolio. Notice here that although you have some information about speaking and uh, listening and speaking and culture, not, it doesn't take you anywhere. There's no link of any kind or content. So make sure that it's easy to navigate, it's easy to find the artifacts and the reflections that you're including, that maybe you know someone who is visiting your space for the first time, they're easy, they're, it's easy for them to find the artifacts and find the uh, reflections that relate to each of the artifacts. So Donna, I hope this helps, uh, and let me know if you have any questions or uh, issues putting together your ePortfolio, but you've got a, a good start here. Now, Fatima will continue with your ePortfolio. And I'm trying to leave a comment here as well for those that I'm checking today in class so that you can later check out the recording. Um, so Fatima, uh, let's see here. So you've got your main page, you've got your name, that's nice. Right, you've got some. You've personalized it a little bit here. Make sure that, as I mentioned in the case of Donna's ePortfolio, that all of these images have a purpose, that they are intentional, and they're not simply left over from a template. Again, we want to remove any extraneous information, any information that doesn't directly relate to your ePortfolio, that relates to your particular context as as a professional. All right, so we have your navigational bar here. I like right away that you have English skills. This is good here because this is one of the strands in your BA, and basically everything that you're taking this semester are, are going to fall under English skills development. So I like how you have that. And then you have a drop-down menu that will take you to the different aspects or different categories or types of artifacts. All right, so I really like how you have this. Now, all right, so you have, let's say, a PDF. So this opens up here, okay. All right, so you have kind of a written explanation to what it is. I like that. And then you have, you have your reflection. Good, I, re I like that. That's, that's really nice how you have that. And the Word document, this document contains information about, all right, so... So here, here's what I, I like about the PDF. When I open up the PDF, it just simply opens up another browser, and it takes me to a document that I cannot edit. And I think I would prefer PDFs over Word documents because, number one, when you open up a Word document, at least in this case, it downloads the file, and then it will upload, then you would open up the Word document which would require someone to, number one, have the Word document. Number two, have the space on the computer. I mean, it depends on the situation. If it's a cell phone, of course, you can do that, but um, it's not quite as easy to access as a PDF. And then the, finally, the advantage I see over a PDF over a Word document is the Word document you can edit, and you really don't want others to edit although it's on their own computer, right? Um, there's really no purpose or reason that I see in this particular case for them to access or open up a Word document. This is basically you showing them content, and a PDF, I think, is best suited for that because almost any computer will open up a PDF and, they're, and it's not uh, editable. You can't edit the content, which in this case is... I think the best, the best option. So I think I would continue 
maybe convert this Word document into a PDF and then upload it as you did here in this first document. But I really like how it's very easy to navigate, listening, speaking, right? And I'm assuming you're still working on this, but I really like what you have so far in terms of just very easily, I'm able to access the different sections and, um, and get around your ePortfolio. Okay, so really good start. Let's take a look at About Me. Right, so a picture of yourself. Now, here is something that I want you to consider, and this may or may not, this is not a problem necessarily. I'm, I'm looking at the contrast between the color of the text and the background. And this is not bad. This is certainly easy to read. Um, but... And this might be part of the template. I don't know how much of this you can control, but just be careful with any text that you use that it's always easy to read. Again, there's no problem with this, but there might be some other pages that have, I don't know if there are different backgrounds. Yeah. And again, most of these backgrounds are designed, I think, for most types of text, as long as you keep the text, in this case, dark, because the backgrounds tend to be light. I think you're okay. Now, the contact here uh, information, make sure that, um, you know, make sure you're happy with that. If this contact information makes sense for you to be on every page, looks like it's on every page, fine. Or maybe you have, if there's a way to put this contact information under the About Me page. Right, but that's a small, that's a minor thing. Um, don't don't worry about it if you're not able. If you're, you know, if you're happy with that, that's fine. Um, but I would much prefer that you have this than include any personal information about yourself. I would not include your address. I would not include your phone number, and I would not include your email address. I think having a contact form like this, which is very common in most of the templates that you'll find. Are the be is the best way for others to contact you. They can send you their emails, send you a, a message this way. But you might want to make sure that you've gone into the, the dashboard so that it's set up, because I think you have to actually input your email so that um, you, it, this information that's in inputted into this contact form gets directed towards... Uh, your email so that you actually get the the message okay and we can and I would test this once you set it up have maybe one of your friends or uh, family members go in and just test it put their name and the email and just see if you end up receiving the message very good start uh, Fatima and I look forward to seeing how this um, unfolds how you continue and working on it this week if you have any questions let me know All right, let's see. Let's take a look. And again, I'm just choosing kind of at random here. Uh, let's see. Let's look at Luis Enrique's. All right, Luis, I like how you, I like the the main page, the background. Um, it, notice here, and this is something I want you to, to be conscious of, and I don't know how much you can, how much you can do with this template, but always make sure that the text is easy to read. And this is not bad. I mean, this is not, um, you know, we can make out your name, but notice how sometimes, depending on the background and the color of the font, that sometimes the text gets lost. And in this case, as your last name kind of goes over the white, it, it gets a little bit difficult to read. But as you scroll up, then it becomes easier. It's not, it's not bad, but make sure that each of the pages that your text is easy to read. This is something that you want to try to, to consider in each of your pages. And, you know, for example here, although you can read this, maybe having a slightly darker font 
might be make it a little bit easier to read you know just something to to consider now double check your um double check your capitalization and i would try to be a little bit more consistent in the the way that you're capitalizing letters so we want to capitalize english because english is a proper noun and in english we want to capitalize proper nouns so english and spanish and german we want to capitalize those I would avoid writing any text in all uppercase. So instead of having listening and speaking all in uppercase and reading and writing, maybe capitalize just the first letter of each word and maybe be consistent here as well. Grammar and context, maybe you capitalize the first letter G in grammar and the first letter C in context, maybe keeping the connector and in all lowercase. So just be a little bit consistent. Maybe capitalize V and video, G and grammar here as well. Now, um, notice that the, and I'm looking, and before I even go into the sub pages, make sure that the navigational bar, and you have a very good start here, but be, uh, make sure it's clear, like for example, grammar and context, the difference between this and then grammar here. Notice you have writing here. If I click on writing, is this the same as writing down here, right? And again, I'm not, it's not, let's try it again. All right, it looks like it's a different page. So just make sure it's clear for you. How do you want to organize it? Do you want to keep it all under English skills, which I think is a good idea, or have it at this upper level? I, again, the former, I think is the best option. I think ha having a one page for English skills and then having everything related to your English skill development under that heading is the best option. And so maybe you can move this page or the content to this page, move that to this sub page called writing under English skills, and then you can remove perhaps this other page. Unless there's another intention or another uh, reasoning for doing that, that's how I would organize this content for the semester. As you get into the BA next year, you're probably going to have another section in addition to English skills called Applied Linguistics. You might have another section called English Methodology or just Methodology. And then you might have another section called Practicum. Again, those are the strands for the BA. Those are the categories of classes that you're going to be taking throughout the BA. And I think that's one logical way to organize the artifacts that you're going to end up creating in your different classes in the BA. So even though you're just starting out and maybe you don't have any content in each of those other sections, there's nothing wrong really by just going ahead and adding those sections so that you have an idea as you're contributing and adding artifacts and reflections to those artifacts that you are uh, organizing your, your content so that when someone visits your ePortfolio for the first time, they can find the content, content very easily. And of course, it helps you as well to just keep organized in showing off basically what your skills are, your knowledge, and your, your values, your ethics. Okay, so I think you have a very good start here. Um, also, remember the main page um, you want to include some sort of opening video, an introduction video. You have an about me on the main page, which I think is fine. You could also create a sub page, right, as you have created here for about me. That's up to you. But I, I see nothing wrong with having an about me on the main page. But I would add your introductory video. And uh, I probably wouldn't have the word artifact. I'm not sure what this is referring to. Um, but you probably don't want to have any artifacts on the main page. Again, try to categorize and organize your artifacts within these sub pages that you've created in this uh, navigational bar to the left of your screen. If you have any questions, Luis, let me know if you have any issues about putting together ideas for your ePortfolio. Make sure you continue working with your classmates, asking them for suggestions and questions and, and seeing what they're doing. Compare what they do with what you're doing to see what works for you and what doesn't. 
And uh, again, make sure that you're uh, seeking advice uh, as you need it. Okay, but you have a, a really good start here, uh, Luis. Okay, let's look at Maria Jose. All right, so, okay, so a very interactive homepage, a lot of activity going on in the background. All right, some pop-ups. Welcome to my site, click here. So, all right, so I'm gonna basically do what I was told. All right, this is gonna take you to the main page. All right, so I'm scrolling down, it's giving you different, all right, so, now notice here, this is a little bit difficult to read, and um, I think, you know, I, the, the, the e-portfolio, right, at the end of the day, when someone's visiting your page, the main thing, it, it should be easy to navigate around. That is, it should be able to, e it, you should be able to easily find the artifacts, the reflections, the information that you've included in your space. So if anything that you're offering in your ePortfolio ends up interfering or confusing the, uh, the, the intended audience, where they're not, like, not sure what to click or where to go to find something, or maybe something's hard to read, then ask yourself, is there a way that I can modify the ePortfolio in order to improve the way that someone ends up navigating around my space. So although I really like some of these effects, there's certain parts that, for example, here, this is hard to read, right? And I'm not sure what it, what it is. I haven't clicked yet, but I should know before I click what I'm clicking, right? So maybe you have some sort of text to instruct the user about what this is or what they should do. Um, I would try to avoid in the main page having any artifacts. I would try to structure your page using subpages, using a navigational bar. Notice at the top you have a link called projects. Now this may be left over from uh, from another from the template. Maybe this was created already. Information Right, so I right, notice that this page here takes you to a sub page. Notice that this is different than clicking on projects, which is really just a link to the main page. It just scrolls down. So I I would prefer that you do that you create more sub pages like this info. And here we want to make sure that we remove any extraneous information, any anything that is not directly related to your ePortfolio that maybe might have been left over from the template, we want to try to remove that information so that there's nothing in here that doesn't relate to you. Now you can use these templates and this is the intention is that you use these so that maybe for example, you can replace this, video, this uh, photo and include your own. You can change the text, maybe change this, um, and you can leave it to this is me if you want, or you can change that if you want, but you can replace this text by including information about yourself. All right, so um, these are just some ideas that you could use to populate this information. And, and here you also have a way to contact yourself. So you could change this and adapt it to your own. Right, but notice that for like under contact, we probably don't want to have artifacts about reading because this contact should only be for those who want to contact you. Maybe you have a form and maybe there's a form in this template that allows you, you could add a form so that they could reach out to you and send you a message without you leaving your email. I would su I'm suggesting to everyone not to include your email, your your personal address or your phone number. Uh, since this is a public page, but the form is a really good way to allow others to contact you in a public way so that you don't have to give up your, uh, your email. So I would continue working on uh, building this 
these page structures. And as we've talked about in class, some of the categories that you could include in your navigational bar along the top of your screen include the four following sections. Number one, the English proficiency or English development. That could be one. Number two, applied linguistics. Number three, methodology or teaching methodology. I think even if you just put methodology, that would be, uh, that would be good. And then the fourth category, practicum, as in teaching practicum. These are all categories of classes that you're going to end up taking as you enter into the uh, BA next year. And I see nothing wrong with going ahead and adding those headings along the top of your navigational screen. Now, to, or options at the, at the top of your screen. I think for us this semester, all of the courses that you're taking relate primarily to skill development. So having a, some, a series of subpages below your category of English development would be a good option. And uh, that's what I would suggest. And, and having all and move all of these, this content that relates to the courses that you're teaching or that you're taking this uh, semester, make sure that you create those subpages under the navigational bar. I think if you look at Fatima's example, you, you can get some ideas. I just uh, looked at hers, and she has a very good start in creating an, a, a, a navigational bar along the top that has subpages uh, so that you're, you're not, when you go to the main page, you're not really bombarded with a lot of content that is not in its own category. And maybe this video here, you could label this video and maybe move it if it is, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. All right, now notice here that, that uh, this is not available to the public. So also, last thing I'll say is this video that you create, try to, there's a couple of ways to do it. I think one way is to upload it to your own personal YouTube channel and then embed the YouTube channel into the page. If you have questions about how to do that, we can talk about that uh, either as a whole group or I can uh, show you how to do that uh, individually if you're, if you're not sure. But that way, anyone can access the videos. The audios and the videos should be accessible to anyone, and they shouldn't have to enter into or sign into uh, Microsoft 365 or, or even Google. It should be a public document since your e-portfolio is a public document the uh, video should be made public so that again anyone can access those uh, and um, directly from your site so so maria jose you've got a really good start here um, and uh, let me know if you have any additional questions about how to organize the content that you have at this point but you have a really good start i like what what you have here in the introduction and um, of course, as you get into the BA, you can always go back to change this and modify this um, as you wish. If you guys are listening, if you're back and uh, just listening to give me give feedback, I'm not going to be able to hear you guys if you jump in. So I'm trying to also check my messages as I'm giving feedback. Um, trying to do both. Um, let's see here. All right, so let's take a look at another. Let's take a look at Nancy. Again, I'm just choosing ePortfolio is kind of at random here. All right, uh, Nancy, uh, I like the title here, ePortfolio. You've got your name off to the side. Make sure that these images are images that you're uploading that you found under a Creative Commons license. Make sure that you're not using any images that are part of the template that are brought over when you started uh, creating this website. Most of you are starting with templates, which I think is a very good idea, but we don't want to include any extraneous information, information that 
uh, maybe it was left over from the initial template that doesn't directly relate to, to our ePortfolio. And since this, um, since this is a public page, I would recommend not using any images whatsoever. Again, making sure that you're using images that are under a Creative Commons license. All right, so this is the main page. I would suggest that you include some navigational, a navigational bar. And if you've been uh, watching some of the other feedback uh, that I've been providing, um, you want to set up a navigational bar that has sub pages that link to your space. All right, so we, we wanna try to avoid any artifacts in the main page. We want to try to set up these. And um, I think Fatima had a really good start and others as well. But I, I did look at Fatima's this morning. So it's still kind of fresh in my mind. But notice how she has navigational bars here. And most templates will support these links, right? And I guess if it doesn't, my suggestion would be to choose a different template. But Notice that she has a category called English skills, and then below that, a pop-up menu appears where each of these links is actually a subpage. So if I click on grammar and writing, and double-check your spelling uh, also, uh, Fatima, uh, for writing, but notice that this is a different page. This is not the home page anymore. Notice that I can go back to the home page by clicking on home, right? But these are sub pages. These are pages within pages. And that's, this is how I would organize your content. This is how I would structure the sub pages using this navigational bar so that it's very easy to find the different content, the different types of artif for artifacts that relate to these different areas. Artifacts that relate to listening and speaking, artifacts that relate to reading, artifacts that relate to culture in this case. Now, you don't have to structure it exactly like this. You could divide it up into maybe two areas, one for writing, one for speaking. It really is up to you how you want to separate these English skills. But this certainly is one way that you can do that. And the main point here is that each of these is a subpage. And when you go to the home page, right, there should not be any artifacts. There should be no um, reflections except for the initial reflection, the introduction to about uh, introducing yourself and introducing your e-portfolio. We want to have that in the main page or a page called About Me. Notice that Fatima also has another About Me page, right? And that's, that's really good. She's got a picture of herself, some information about herself. And she could choose to include her video, her introduction video, either here in this page or in the main page. I think either is acceptable. And um, that's what I would suggest trying to do in your case, uh, Nancy, is to try to build this structure, this navigational bar, so that when someone visits your page for the first time, it's easy to find the information. Okay, so that's what I would suggest. If you have any questions, Nancy, about how to manipulate the template, I would first check with your teammates to see, get some feedback from them. Um, but of course, if you have issues, let me know. Send me a message and we can, uh, we can discuss it. I think I'm going to share Fatima's in the chat. All right, uh, Sigrid, let's take a look at your ePortfolio. All right, I like uh, the background. You've got a good title. You have your name. And I immediately like your navigational bar. It's very clear. It's very uh, direct and easy to find. And certainly for this semester, this, this would suffice. This would be good enough uh, for this semester because, again, all of the artifacts that you're including this semester relate to these areas. You'll probably, as you get into the BA next year and you're building and, and, and maintaining your ePortfolio, you will probably want to create subcategories. So under homepage, maybe have one for English skill development that applies to 
listening and speaking, reading, culture, grammar, and writing. And then maybe you want to have a second subtitle called, let's say, Applied Linguistics, a third called Methodology, and a fourth called Practicum. Because again, all of the, the classes that you're going to be taking in the BA fall under one of those four categories. So this is fine for right now, but perhaps later as you get into the BA, you'll decide to maybe modify slightly these uh, headings. If you want to do that now, actually that's what I would recommend, but if you want to wait, certainly I, I understand that, no problem. Now, the thing that I would try to have, and I don't know if this template will allow this, but let me, well, let's see. No, that's right. That's okay. When I first clicked on this, I thought it was actually on this, the main page, but it's not. It's actually a sub page. Now, I would suggest that any documents that you include in your, your e-portfolio that you don't access or don't use any Google Drive or Microsoft 365 or OneDrive where someone would need to sign in in order to be able to access that information. Instead, what I would do is to create a PDF if it's a document so that you could directly upload the PDF to your space and uh, everyone would be able to view that content. Otherwise, you're, uh, you're not really sharing this information uh, to everyone and uh, they're not going to be able to access that. So I would not use Google Drive or OneDrive. I would instead create a PDF. And we talked about different ways of sharing documents. I think most services will give you some space that you can allow or that you can upload PDF files directly to the space. But there are other services, and I know Scribd is one that I use. Uh, it's a free account that you... Uh, can create your own space and upload documents. You can upload uh, any type of document and then share that document. You can embed it. You can link it to that page. Uh, and uh, you can back actually bring in those documents that you upload to Scribd to your ePortfolio. And for some reason, it's taking a little time to open. Yeah, so try it again. Having some connectivity issues here. Well, uh, for some reason, I can't open up Scribd. We, I think we talked about it in a prior class. I'll try again a little bit later today in class. Let me try another link. Here we go. So if I sign in, you can see the documents that I have created here. Sign in. So you create a free account in Scribd, and you can upload. Notice you have options to upload by clicking on this up arrow. But here, you can see document uploads. And uh, these are some of the documents that I've uploaded. You can upload PDFs, Word documents, and so whatever type of document that you upload. It gives you an option, notice here, you can embed, you can share this information to the world. So this is a way that you could combine, in this case, Scribd, and there are other services that do the same. Um, and you might even be able to upload documents depending on what service, like Google Sites. Um, Google Sites, you could actually publish your document. And if you have questions about how to do that, in Google Drive, it actually gives you a way to publish a website. So maybe that document, you can convert that within Google Drive to a public document. And so if you're using Google Sites already, then that might even be an easier option for you. Um, you'll have to check to see if that takes up space on your Google Drive. I'm not sure what kind of account you have. But uh, either way, uh, Scribd or converting a Google Drive document to a public page, that would allow you to share that information here publicly. All right, so you have a good start here, and uh, don't forget also to include your introductory video either in the home page, or you might actually have a, another page, another sub page called About Me that 
list information very specific to you. And some of your classmates are doing that. If you want to take a look around uh, and to get some ideas, that's also another option for including your introductory video. But you've got a good start, Sigrid, um, and I look forward to seeing how this uh, materializes, how you finish. If you have any questions, of course, send me a chat, and uh, we can uh, discuss discuss any questions that you have. All right, let's continue on. All right, Tanya. All right, so here we have your main page, and I like how you have uh, your pictures here, some good animations. All right, um, got a welcome, you have a greeting here, nice background going on. What I would suggest is to try to avoid having any artifacts in the home page, with the exception of your introductory video. Okay, that would be an exception. But I think what I would suggest instead is creating navigational bars here along the top. If uh, you saw Fatima's example, she had one called, I think, English Development or English Skills as a title. And below that had a drop-down menu of subpages that included... Uh, the different areas or the different subjects that she was taking or that she is taking this semester. You could do something very similar, but the idea is that these artifacts that you have in the main page actually reside or they exist in subpages, not necessarily in the, the home page. We don't want to have too much information in the main page. This should be mainly just a way to greet the audience, maybe say something about who you are, perhaps if you don't want to have a separate about me page, and maybe your famous uh, or favorite quote, something that is inspirational for you as a professional. Uh, there are different ways that you can go about creating your, your main page, but I would suggest that you try to focus on putting less information maybe in the main page, in the home page, and try to find ways to develop this navigational bar at the top of your screen. We also want to avoid or remove any extraneous information. If you want to include a blog, I think that's great and I encourage you to do so. But if you're not going to be developing a blog in the short term here, then I would suggest that you remove that for now. You can always go back and add a blog to this page if you want to your ePortfolio. But if it's not something that you're going to be using, fine. I would suggest not using a blog format, which is usually organized by date, to upload your, your artifacts. What I would suggest doing instead of a blog is to actually set up dedicated pages or subpages that show your artifacts. Okay, and uh, they're, you know, that's, that's how I would suggest uh, that you that you try to do that. The only other option, I guess, if you're using a blog, if you're using tags, and maybe maybe create a tag system that relates to the different categories, m maybe that would work. I guess you could do that. As long as you have a way to filter those tags so that, let's say that I want to see your artifacts for writing. I could click on the tag writing and then see all, all of those artifacts. I think that would be an option if you want to set up a blog format and but try to use a tagging system and, and it could get a little bit more complicated depending on how tech savvy you are, how uh, much you want to get into this. I, I don't want it to be more difficult than it has to be. So I want you to choose a way to work with your ePortfolio that is easy to use, that, that is logical, that makes sense for you, something that you are more likely to maintain throughout your time as a student at the university and as well as, as you get into the, the profession, something that you continue on as you gain more experience. It really needs to be a space that is easy for you to, to add content to, to keep organized, and uh, only you really know, you know, what the best way it is. But I want to make sure that you're making the right decisions here at the very beginning so that you don't end up trying to really neglect it because maybe perhaps of how it's organized. 
Okay, so if this is something that you're not sure about, you want to discuss, then let me know. Send me a chat, or we can discuss it outside of class. If you have, uh, if you want some direct feedback about maybe uh, some suggestions about how you could organize this, really the difference between setting it up as kind of a blog format versus setting it up as subpages, which most of your classmates have decided uh, to do. But you've got a really good start here. Um, don't forget your introductory video. Try to include that here as well. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing how you how it comes together. All right, let's look at Yaisha. All right, so I like your homepage here, you've got a, a title. Nice background. Now, what I would suggest, Yaisha, um, is I would try to not include artifacts in the main page. Now, this Inicio, we want to first also make sure that everything is in English. So you could change Inicio to home. Check your spelling. And uh, I like how you have the organization here. I think for this semester, for this class, uh, this is uh, perfectly logical. Um, I think once you get into the BA, you may end up changing these titles. So instead of having listening and speaking, reading, grammar, and writing, that you end up having, let's say, four categories called one, uh, English proficiency or English development as one. Number two, Applied Linguistics, number three, Methodology, as in Teaching Methodology, and number four, Practicum, as in Teaching Practicum. Those are our general four categories of classes that, um, that you're going to experience when you get into the BA. And so then you could have these subheadings or these headings along the top in your navigational bar and then have a drop-down menu as you hover over each of these that provide subpages to those particular areas and those artifacts that relate to those. So listening, speaking, reading, grammar, and writing, maybe one for culture, would all fall under what's called an English development or English skills or skills development, something, some kind of title like that, like those, that would relate to you developing your English skills. If you look at fact, Fatima's example, you can see what I mean. Uh, she has a good uh, start in terms of her navigational bar and how she offers drop-down men menus as subpages. So by doing that, then your home page will be dedicated only to maybe an, one video that introduces yourself and your page, maybe a, a greeting of some kind, maybe your favorite quote. You could also include that. There's some other types of information that you can include in your homepage, but we don't want to offer too much information. Um, like for example, this I think is great, but I would have this, your, pay, your, pay, your picture and this greeting along the top. Notice that I have to scroll all the way down at the bottom to see that we kind of miss that. And that would be a good thing to include at the top of your screen and then move all of this content, these artifacts and reflections and things, move it into their respective areas, their respective categories. Now, notice that you're using, let's, let's see here. So when I click on listening and speaking, it doesn't actually take me to a sub page. I would suggest that you create sub pages. And maybe in this template, you have an option of instead of including this link to a section of the home page that you actually create a sub page, a whole new page. And again, most of your classmates are setting it up this way. If you want to look at some examples, take a look at um, maybe start with some of the some of the videos that I've talked about today here in class, or some of the e-portfolios that I've talked about today in class. 
and to get some ideas. Maybe talk with your teammates to get some suggestions about how to set this up. But instead of, again, having one page, because essentially you only have one page here. And if this were the only class that you were going to create an ePortfolio in, this probably would be okay. But I'm thinking long-term, and I want you to think long-term. And imagine the vast amounts of artifacts that you could have in your ePortfolio by the time you finish the BA, some four and a half years from now. You're likely to have a lot. And we don't want to have all of that content in one page. We would like to separate it into sub-pages. So again, someone visiting your website, let's say a director, a principal of a school, maybe you want to work at a school and you are sharing your ePortfolio for them to take a look at, that they are able to find the artifacts, that it's very easy to navigate around the different sub-pages to find the information, the reflections that you offer, um, and it's just very easy to get around. I think, again, your best bet is going to be creating a sub-page kind of format to your ePortfolio. So consider that. Take a look at it. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, let's take a look. Who else? Let's take a look. Let's see. Maria Fernanda. You'll notice that a lot of the feedback that I'm providing uh, is very similar. Okay, so if it helps to look at not only your own feedback from your own ePortfolio, but from some feedback from your classmates, that's the reason why I'm making this as transparent as possible so that you can kind of compare contrast what you're doing with uh, some of the ePortfolios that your classmates are doing. I really like uh, your home page here, very colorful. Um, the ePortfolio, the text, I don't know if there's a way to maybe make this bolder or maybe a background, maybe uh, some sort of a frame, uh, just to make it a little bit easier to read. Notice that the contrast between the color of the text and the background uh, is in some parts are not great in the sense that it you you lose a little bit of the text and so even here and if you have ePortfolio here maybe you change this to your to your name maybe you're just starting but it looks like up here you have a way in this template to add navigational uh, options and so here's where you could add your sub pages. Um, like we've talked about in class, maybe one for uh, skill development, another one for applied linguistics, another one for methodology, and another one for practicum. You might even have a, an, an additional category for about me. If you want to de have a dedicated page that is about you, where you show your picture, you show some information about yourself, maybe even a form if the template has a predetermined form that allows others to contact you without you sharing your email, your phone number, or your address, which I would suggest that you not do, um, then that would be a good option is to create a space about me that you could have that, that information. So I understand you're probably just getting started. Make sure that you also have your introduction video and uh, that you introduce yourself and introduce your page in that video. And you can either include it here in the this home page, or if you decide to have a page called About Me, you could also include your video there in that page as well. Okay, so a uh, good start here, Fernanda, but let me know if you have any questions about putting together your ePortfolio. Take a look at Jazz's. E-portfolio, okay. Um, looks like Jazz, I'm not able to. In fact, I'm going to send you a message in the chat. All right, let's see. Fernando. All right, so we've got it. Um, good, an English trip. I like the title. Maybe you capitalize tr the T in trip also. Um, I like how you have your name off to the side here and you have a video. It looks like 
introductory video. And for those of you who are creating video, right, this is a one, I think, a, an easy way to embed or insert your own video into your own web page or your own ePortfolio is to upload it to your own YouTube channel and then embed it into your page just as Fernando's done. Great. So, right. This is great. I like how you've done this. This is very engaging from just looking at it from a standpoint of accessing your ePortfolio for the first time, getting to know you right away, uh, hearing you and seeing the, the content. I like the navigational bar, the options that you've chosen. And um, I really like how you have skill development, applied linguistics, teaching methodology, and teaching pra practice. You could also call this practicum. Again, just trying to find ways to simplify and shorten those titles. I think the shorter, the better, as long as they are still um, descriptive enough to, to understand. You might have just the title methodology and assume that, you know, once you go into methodology that it's related to teaching methodology. So, for example, if you type in a word methodology only, you could still, maybe you have this title here. And this might be linked depending on the template. But even if you just have methodology here, or maybe you create a subtitle below that says teaching methodology, then it becomes more apparent exactly what it is. But because this is a rather long heading, this is certainly an option, right? So practicum, one word instead of two. Methodology, one word instead of two. Applied linguistics, you probably need both of those words. Skills development, I think, is good. Uh, but that's just a suggestion. But I really like how you already have this set up so that when you start taking classes in the BA, that it is very logical, right? It makes a lot of sense. So when I go into skills development, all right, so I've got here um, some artifacts. Now, one thing to think about is, and I don't know about this particular template, but if there's a way to create a subpage of a subpage that is below skills development, if there's a way to even further organize and subdivide the artifacts into separate pages, that certainly is one way that you could do this. If not, another way is to maybe create headings. The only thing that I'm uh, not sure about is, and again, I'm thinking long term, after four and a half more years of taking courses and gathering experiences, and uploading more and more artifacts over time that you're likely to have a lot of artifacts under this category of skills development. And maybe one page won't be uh, enough, right? And, and certainly for this class, for this semester, this might be good enough, right? Because you're not going to have that many. But I'm thinking longer term. So two things. One is you decide to set up subpages within skills development, right? A subpage of a subpage, or you create headings in this one page for this semester at least that divide or categorize the types of artifacts that you've included under this one page called skills development, if that makes sense. And notice that your Google Drive, it looks like you're using Google Sites. So what I would suggest is if you're going to use Google Drive for the documents that you're going to share publicly is to uh, publish those as a website. There's an option within Google Drive to publish documents so that they are made available to the public. And then you can insert those documents into a public space like this ePortfolio. If you have questions about how to do that, let me know. Maybe check with your classmates. Uh, and your teammates and see what they have to say. I also mentioned Scribd, which is another option if you want to set up a free account and share a document uh, to your web page or your ePortfolio. You could use a service called Scribd, which is free, and that certainly is another option, another way that you can do it if you don't want to use Google Drive. But since you're using Google Sites, I think it makes sense to be able to do that. Uh, it just depends on at the end, how much space all those documents end up taking up in your Google Drive. Um, but yeah, those are a couple of options. I like how you have, it looks like your uh, reflection here. Oh, hello. We have to learn. Yeah, so 
This is great. I really like how this embeds nicely into your ePortfolio. It's very easy to use, very clear. And um, I like what you've done here with, with this. I would, my only suggestion would be to take another look at your Google Drive documents and maybe make those available, either sharing or I think there's an option to publish them as a web page so that you could bring those into the um, this space. Okay. All right, so very good start, uh, Fernando. Let me know if you have any uh, questions. Okay, um, just responding, Jez, to your message. And I think I updated your link. We've got a few minutes here before we close the class. Uh, taking a look, if you're listening, uh, great. If not, hopefully this is being recorded. You could go back and listen. Um, yeah, um, I like... I really like the the main page. I think I would capitalize English. I mean, there are ways that, you know, you can take some liberties and be a little bit um, unique in the way that you use capitalization. But I think since this is an e-portfolio for you as a professional in the English field, the English teaching field, I think I would capitalize uh, the word English. Now, notice here in the Google Drive, I mentioned this uh, with Fernando's and some, and some others that are using Google Sites. There is a way to share a Google Drive document by either publishing it as a page, as, as a web page, or I think there's a way also to publish it or just share it publicly. But take a look at the sharing options and the publishing options in Google Drive so that you can bring that same document automatically into your ePortfolio, which is really a public space. It's a, a, a way to share that document so everyone can see it without having to sign in to Google Drive. You really don't want the, to have the user or to force the user to sign really to sign in, and they may not even be able to access your document simply because you have not granted permission for others to see that. So take a look at that and let me know if you have any questions about how to set that up. But uh, quickly, I noticed that you have your English skills uh, subpage, which I really like how you have that organized, a drop-down menu that makes it very easy to find the content. And I'm suggesting that everyone do this. Uh, if you compare what you've done here, Jez, with uh, what Fernando's done, he's taken it a step further to go ahead and add other subpages that correspond with applied linguistics, methodology, and practicum with the idea that later, when he gets into the BA, that he could add content to that. But certainly what you have here is a very good way to start your, your e-portfolio so that you could easily add to it as you get into the BA and you take other types of classes, um, you know, throughout your, uh, your stay here at the university. Um, yeah, Google Drive, same thing, double check. I would publish your pages, uh, check with your classmates and check with me if you have any questions about how to make those documents public. But I like how you have used your um, titles, right? So you have comprehension. I like how you're organizing and complementing the artifacts with text to make it very clear about what it is we're looking at. And I think that's a good idea. You'll later then you could add your audio or video reflection to even go further to complement kind of what, you're, what you have here. But a very good start, very good way of uh, starting your ePortfolio. It's simple, but it's very easy to read. And this is what makes a good ePortfolio, something that's very easy to read, something that's easy to navigate, to find information. Each of these pages have different colors, and maybe this was set up in the template. Maybe you designed it yourself. Either way, it works, and I would continue doing the same. This needs to be easy for you guys to, to add content to. Don't make it any more complicated than it has to be. And I think this is a really good example, something that appears that anyway, to be very basic, very easy to, to uh, add content to. And that really is uh, one of the objectives, is it should be easy for you as the content creator. It should be easy for the user in terms of finding the information to navigating around uh, the different pieces of information. All right, so nice job, Jazz. All right, guys, it's 9.40. And going back here to the main page, you'll notice I've left some notes 
a memo here. Those of you who I have left comments today, I've tried to record everything that uh, that I've been, uh, all the feedback that I've been, been providing. And I left comments to those, for example, Dana, Fatima, Fernando. I would highly recommend you guys checking out Jazz's uh, ePortfolio, Fernando's and Fatima's. The way, especially the way that they've set up the navigational bar, right? Take, pay close attention to how they've set it up. And I think they're on the right track and keeping it very simple, how to navigate around the course content. Uh, let's see, I took a look at Jazz's, uh, Luis, I took a look at yours, Maria Fernanda, Maria Jose, Nancy, Sigrid, Tanya, and Yaisha. I had a chance to look at yours today. I will try to continue looking at others outside of class and later this week. If anybody wants me to look at your ePortfolio or has a question outside of class, of course, continue to send me messages and chat, and I'll be happy to look at your ePortfolio. But really take a look at the feedback, especially today. I'm going to try to upload today's recording as soon as possible. So later today, go back and look at uh, and listen to the feedback that I provided today. And... Um, you know, take a look and compare with your your ePortfolio with uh, the ePortfolio from your classmates to get an idea about what what options you have, right, for your own online space. All right, guys, any questions about the ePortfolio? Any uh, challenges that you're facing in terms of what you're trying to do with setting up your online space? Yeah, I'm looking here at the chat, uh, Maria Fernanda. Let me know. And uh, again, I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear you guys. Um, I forgot, you're, I'm not able to hear you guys today. Uh, yeah, let me know if if I don't have your updated e or yeah ePortfolio, the link. Let me know. This is the ePortfolio page, <clears throat> and th these are the links that I have. So just go in and double check that. You know, whatever link that I have, it goes to your, to the correct space. And if it doesn't, no problem. Just send me a, a chat with the corrected link, and I'll just go in very quickly and update the URL. Okay, this is why I keep this one page so that we all have uh, one place where we can find this information. And I'm trying to include the ePortfolio, all the feedback that I provide here as well, just below, so that... Again, I want to make available everything that we're, uh, that the feedback that I'm providing, I want to keep it as transparent as possible so that you can compare and contrast, that you can see what I'm saying to others and, and find out how that applies to your own ePortfolio. All right. So um, I'm going to see if I can figure out my audio. I'm not sure what happened. I'm going to see if I can get this going. Um, for tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll probably have a uh, speaking activity, a Flipgrid speaking activity that will last maybe half the class at the most. And then we'll continue working again on our ePortfolio. Really try to put the time in um, this week, guys, to, to continue working on your ePortfolio. Many of you have not included a video in your home page. I think Fernando has a really good start uh, in terms of his reflections and the introductory video that he's included. So check out his ePortfolio. Maybe others have as well. I just haven't gotten to it. But everyone at this point should have your video in either your home page or if you want to have a dedicated About Me page, which is a sub-page of your home page, that you want to include that introductory video there, that also makes sense. I understand that, and that would be, a, I think, a good option also. All right? Either way is fine. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there. Uh, it's 9.45, give you some time before your next class. Tomorrow we'll continue uh, as we uh, finish our last week together of regular classes. Remember, this Friday is going to be our online listening. This is going to be the online listening uh, that will be graded 
that will make up the 40% of your grade. As I mentioned before, I will be giving opportunities th next week during exams week for anyone who wants to have a second or maybe a third opportunity to listen to the TOEFL for, uh, for getting a better grade. You'll have an option to do that next week. Okay? All right, guys, we'll stop there. And again, sorry about the audio. We'll try to get this figured out. Tomorrow we'll continue. And, but today we'll stop there for today. So have a good day today, guys. And we'll talk to you tomorrow.